Hello, everybody. This is Supreme Decisions, and you're listening to the Supreme Decisions Legal Minute Podcast. Now, everybody that's been following has noticed that I've gone into an angle of going into the Supreme Brady list for the most part. The reason being is because I told you we're going to go into a to a period where we're going to weaponize your defense. And part of that weaponization is going after the first cog in the machine. And the way we're going to do that is through the Brady list. Because you have the right to confront your accusers. And like I said, the first cog in the machine is our first introduction to our current policing system. Now, I'm going to give you a couple viewpoints today because this one is going to be in parts. Going to be a few pieces. Not going to be a very long podcast. Well, at least not today. But I'm going to give you nuggets that you can take with you, kind of digest and get prepared for the next steps in the series. Because everything that I'm doing now is going to be about the cognitive reach of our own minds. Because now this is the red pill portion of everything that I'm teaching. Because if you're not prepared to actually look at the actual the situation as it actually is, this is the time to stop following. This is the time to not support. This is the time to go on and blue pill it up, go back to your regular lives because this is where it gets deep this is where the rubber meets the road this is all come up with about 90 other colloquialisms that actually make you feel good but this is where i start to open your eyes to what's really going on and how it really affects us and again today this is just a part one and actually i should just call this a red pill portion of the brady list spot Let's call it that, the red pill portion of the Brady List spot. Because the Brady List is simply the impeachment evidence in police personnel files and the battle with the prosecutorial team. What do I mean by that? Well, remember I told you police have a choice. You know, exercising free will when they choose to bring you a part of that system by making an arrest, by making a stop, even by introducing themselves to you. They are becoming part of that. They're introducing you to that system. It's their choice. The prosecutor then is handed information from that police officer who made a choice to then choose to follow up on that police officer's choice. Notice two people with choice. They're choosing. So therefore, those two guys are on the same team. Notice you haven't teamed up with either one of them. But they're partnering together against you. Now, let's go into it. The Brady Doctrine requires prosecutors to disclose favorable material evidence to the defense. Now, what does the Brady, I guess the Brady list consist of? Basically, police personnel files, not personal, personnel. There's a different end in that one. There's another end. So understand that. These files contain valuable evidence of police misconduct that can be used to attack an officer's credibility on the witness stand and can make the difference between acquittal and conviction. I'm going to say that one more time because most of us don't even understand that we have access to that information because I'm even going to put up a Georgia attorney who told a client a bold-faced lie when he told her to ask for the police personnel records. You know, the thing or the person who made the choice to make him part of the system. She told, oh, you can't ask for that. But yet, whenever she was confronted on the phone with myself and him, she admitted that she lied. And she then made the request. And she worked with the prosecution to bully him into a plea. Note what I just said. 
the defense attorney worked with the prosecution to bully her client, the defendant, into a plea so the prosecution can get a win. I'll get deeper into that because, again, when we weaponize in our defense, the enemy of my enemy is not my friend. It's just a tool I use to destroy them both. Understand that always. The enemy of my enemy is not my friend. The enemy of my enemy is a tool. And as long as you keep everything in those aspects, you have an opportunity to win. Because it's only the usage of your tools which makes them effective. But I'm going to read that one more time. Because again, the purpose of the Brady List is to get at police personnel files. The context of those police personnel files are those files containing valuable evidence of police misconduct that can be used to attack the officer's credibility on the witness stand and can make the difference between an acquittal and a conviction. Because I'm going to say this a bunch of times during this short podcast. You have the right to confront your accusers. And your first accuser is the person that made a willful choice to bring you part of the justice system. Guess what you have a right to do? Confront them. You get to attack their character. Why? Because they chose to put their character on trial by choosing to make you part of their system. Every conversation, they're making a conscious choice. Who are you not to accept it and then put it on front street for them? Because if you had not spoken to me, had you had not had this encounter with me, we wouldn't be here. Because I even had a police officer when I was suing him one time, it was it was almost hilarious because the word irony didn't, it was the most hilarious thing I'd ever seen in my life. I'm holding my wife's hand, holding my son. Police officer comes out of the courtroom. He yells, why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to me? I have a wife and kids. While I'm holding my wife's hand and holding one of my children. He asked me, why was I doing that to him? Because he has a wife, he has children. My response was easy. Because you didn't give a shit about my wife or my children. The enemy of my enemy is not my friend. It is a tool I use to destroy them both. Always understand that. Because they don't care anything about you until they realize that the system itself does not care about them. Always understand that. They think they have the protection of the system when in fact the system does not care about them either. I've even given you videos of that. So for all the police officers or the police apologists that don't like what I just said, go back. Listen to the podcast. I spoke about how the police unions make sure that police officers don't have access to mental health how they spend the least amount of money on police officer mental health. They spend the most money on officers that are violent, destructive, and causing the most chaos. And again, those weren't my reports. I was just reading them. And where'd they come from? Police officers. Let that sink in. Now, what happens when you're doing this Because again, the context of the Brady is right here. Critical impeachment evidence is routinely and systematically suppressed as a result of state laws and local police policies that limit access to those personnel files. I'm gonna say that one more time. I'm gonna say, I'll guarantee. Critical impeachment evidence is routinely and systematically suppressed. Remember, I talked about. I just, I literally just said it. Had a young man, hey, I'm going to hire you as a consultant. I have an attorney, I want to hire you as a consultant. Makes a request to his attorney. His attorney tells him, no, we can't do that. Nope, nope, we can't do that. That's illegal. Nope. 
until she was confronted with the actual laws of her state, which is Georgia. Then she admitted she lied to him. So even the defense is helping the prosecutor suppress. Because even I'm going to show you one here in El Paso. Oh, well, no, you can't, you can't look at that. Why would you bother the prosecutor with that? Because that was what one of the Florida attorneys said. I'm going to show you him too. These are defense attorneys. Why would you bother the prosecutor? Why are you, why is the prosecutor bothering me? Because we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the cop and the prosecutor. You wouldn't have any money from me if it wasn't for the cop and the prosecutor. What do you mean? Why would I bother the prosecutor? The prosecutor asked for me to bother them. They need for me to bother them. They need for me to be there. They requested my, <laughs> they requested my presence and I must give it to them. Now, they may not like it. Not really my concern, because had they not bothered me, I would not have an opportunity to bother them. It is systematically suppressed, and as a result of state laws and local policies that limit access to these personnel files. Now keep in mind, these are good people, right? They're doing the job the right way, but why would we not have access to the files? Why do they not want us to see them doing what they're doing? You know, all these things that we got questions on because we're told they're good people. We're told that they're professionals. Remember Officer Dingle? Yeah, I'll get into that again. But why we got all this hiding and suppressing? Why do we have all this lying and corruption? Because that's what it amounts to. Now, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you a case. I'll give you a context afterwards. I'm not gonna go into the case. It's Young Blood v. West Virginia, 547 US 867. 2006. Now, prosecutors and police officers form a cohesive prosecutorial team. The prosecutor has the means to discharge the government's Brady responsibility if he or she wishes. Sounds like another choice for the prosecutor. But notice what they use. They even use the word. The prosecutor and the police are a team. Prosecute, police, judge, defense attorney, team, 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 and you. You're the fifth tier of that rank. Everybody else is voted in by you. It's paid by you. Everybody else is there to supposedly serve you. But when I said you are the most powerful person in the courtroom, had people upset but I also told you you were the most powerful person in the courtroom because I also told you that the defense attorney doesn't do what you do, tell them to do because they are an employee because you're paying them it is a violation of not only their oath but also let bar card prosecutor is voted in by you police officers are fiduciaries I actually read that to you. Judges voted in by you. So the judge serves you. People. Remember that? We the people. Prosecutor. Who the prosecutor represent? The people. Prosecutor represents you. So why is it the prosecutor is choosing to not be on your team? Are they really representing you? We'll get into that. By putting in place procedures and regulations to bring forth information only known to the police. Because remember, I also gave you a case that states if the prosecutor chooses to bring forth a case where they're using the police as the crux of it, which, you know, the citation, because the police are the ones that introduce themselves to you and choose to bring you in. The prosecutor is now responsible for all information, even if it is only known to police. Damn shame, their rules screw them. Isn't that amazing? If you know them and you know how to enforce them. Because it's funny, because I have a lot of people that will call me and be like, yeah, I, if you do this and you do that and da 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 da, I'll be like, okay, great. How do you enforce that? And none of them know. 
that's the most amazing thing. But then they'll try to give me information. Or they'll, well, I'm just trying to educate you. you give me information that, one, is behind me. I have that. How do you enforce it? How do we move forward? I'm going I'm to I'm look over there and see, can we get to it? I just want to know, can, can we get to it? I just, where we at? Ninety nine point nine percent of the time, that's a, I don't know, but I'm gonna give you information that you don't have. I'm where that information connects, because not only do I know the procedure to get you there, I know the procedures to enforce it. This is the three little pigs because I understand how to build a house of bricks. They can huff and they can puff, but they can't change their words. They can't change their laws. They can't change their procedures because it's written. When you talk about the masonry acts of Ben Franklin, the pen is mightier than the sword, you understand the context of it. The pen is mightier than the sword. It is written. That's why when you ask for things that are signed, it becomes one of those, I don't know if I should give it to them. Because not only are you...